What's up and welcome back to the shop. Today we have a 2005 Ford F-150, 543 valve of course, uh, that the customer purchased it about three years ago, had about 74,000 miles on it, immediately of course started having issues with the VCT system. So he did a full timing set on there, all Ford parts, melting high volume oil pump, running 5W30, all the good stuff. You follow my videos to the T. Uh, and everything's working great for two years and then all of a sudden he's getting timing issues once again. 10,000 miles later and he has done all, everything right okay so I already started driving the vehicle I got some uh, scan tool data so I'm gonna bring you guys along for some diagnostics on here just kind of look over my shoulder and we can see what we find on this vehicle let's check it out all right let's look at some scan tool data here so of course the first thing I did is pull codes on it on demand which tests everything electrically actuates everything everything passed uh, but we do have continuous memory DTC, so P0011, which basically means the bank one camshaft is not responding to commands from the VCT solenoid, so it's sitting uh, more advanced than it should be, basically not retarding as its RPMs go up. And then on bank two, we have a VCT solenoid electrical circuit problem, uh, but the customer did say that he pulled them off at one point and shocked the solenoids. Um, so that may be irrelevant, but we also have a P0021, which is the same thing over advanced on bank two. So bank one and two are sitting over advanced. Now, when this engine is just sitting here at idle and everything's locked, um, it's sitting full advanced. As you apply VCT oil pressure to these phasers, they're going to move and they're going to uh, retard the timing as the RPMs go up. Okay. So this means they're not moving when they should be and they're just kind of sitting full advanced. So let's go ahead and look at some uh, live data on here of these, um, the VCT error. That's the, a very important PID in li the live data feed. You want to look at the actual error it's seeing. Which is basically actual uh, versus commanded on there. So once this thing connects back up, check it out so at idle it's just gonna sit here uh, it runs great like I said uh, there's no uh, rough idle issues or stalling issues there's no performance issues he's just getting the VCT error codes so I like like, like to monitor the temperature of the engine because um, this concern with uh, oil pressure and volume usually happens when uh, the engine's hot so it's a good thing to monitor uh, but we want to watch the VCT error so this is bank one and two VCT error that's seeing right here idle these should be hovering a little tighter around zero but no big deal they're hovering right there now what you want to do is kind of put the vehicle into gear and kind of brake torque it you know put it in the drive and then give it a little bit of gas and you want to monitor the amount of error. Now, at least initially, when you first hit it, the error is going to be way off, okay? But once you're stable and going down the road, let's say you're cruising, it should be right around zero once again, okay? You can see this one's a little jumpy, not the end of the world, and this one's just sitting over here 40 degrees too far advanced. Again, because it's actuating, it should be pulling it back and retarding the timing. So I've seen where bank, the bank that's the worst, which is uh, what bank two on here. Okay, you can see it's way off. It's nowhere near zero. This guy at least is hovering around zero on bank one. I've seen the bank where it's way off like that cause errors and fluctuations, I guess, in oil pressure on the other bank. And I think that's what's happening here. So at this point, looking at this data, we're just gonna go after bank two. Not to mention, on um, bank two, we had that VCT electrical circuit code also, but I'm thinking this one's stuck mechanically. So we're gonna go back to the shop and check it out. But that quick, we, sitting there in our butts, we figured out we need to just concentrate on that one solenoid on bank two, and that's it. I mean, look at that. Fix that before you ever try to tighten this up, okay? Let's go back to the shop and check it out. Yeah, so cruising down the road here, I mean, we're good to go, man. We're, you know, this thing's got power, okay? Cruising along. Everything's fine, sounds fine, all that good stuff. 
engine's nice and hot, we have power. And like I said, the other test is if you have any kind of oil pressure or volume issues, come to a stop. Where's it sitting now? Zero. Now, if we had oil pressure and volume issues when we were taken off like that, actuating, and we came back down to idle, these would be way off. You can see they came right back to where they should be. So they're right now, as of right now, there's no issues with that. We just have issues with controlling those circuits on there. So it's either a mechanical issue with the solenoid or electrical. Let's go back and check it out. Now, anytime you're diagnosing a VCT concern on one of these engines, new timing components or not, you want to check the basics before you get too far into the electrical and mechanical side of it, the more invasive test. So check the basics first. You wanna check the oil level and quality. You can see on here the oil level is about a quart low or so, uh, but it looks pretty clean. Um, so that's good to go. It's not gonna affect VCT operation on a seven quart system. So that looks good to go. And over here, I like to check the oil fill spout. Look down inside there with a good flashlight and get an overall sense of the past maintenance on the engine. You can see there's some varnish here on the spout. It's pretty common. Uh, and you can see the new phaser down inside of there. So that all looks pretty good to go. Now at this point, because this customer did bring the vehicle in for a coolant flush, these codes, and then an oil change, we're gonna change the oil at this point, just so that's taken care of and topped up, and then we'll go ahead and we'll recheck it with the scan tool in the stall here, do another brake torque, and see if the problem's still there. It's gonna still be there, but we'll do the check anyways. Then we'll get into more invasive electrical and mechanical diagnostics on bank two here, that VCT solenoid. Remember, this bank right here is giving us the highest error rate, so we're gonna go after this bank right here and fix it before we worry about any kind of errors over here on bank one. Because the oil comes out of the pump, goes to the filter, then comes over and feeds this head first, and then it goes through the main journals and over to the right-hand head here. So if we have any kind, of, any kind of fluctuations or errors over here, it can affect it as the oil goes over here because it's dropping and pulsating over here with any kind of VC T system concerns here. So yeah, we need to concentrate on this side first. So I'm gonna change the oil and then we'll get back to the scan tool and retest. All right, oil change is all complete. Let's take a look at our live data once again. So I have it in gear right now in reverse. We're gonna brake torque it so we actuate the VCT solenoids and let's see. And sure enough, bank one is hovering around zero, it's pretty good. And this one's sitting pretty well past 40. So you can see down here, the PCM's trying to overcompensate. So it has the solenoid at 100% trying to get the darn thing to move. Uh, whereas on bank one, you can see it's kind of blipping it. And that kind of uh, correlates with the fluctuations here. So like I said, avoid the other bank. Don't worry about that, even though you had a code. Concentrate on the bank that is way off and honestly needs attention. I mean, look, it's just sitting pretty over here, hovering once it's actuated. And it's trying to overcompensate. So we're gonna go after bank two's VCT solenoid electrically first, and then we'll look at it mechanically. With the power steering reservoir bracket gone, I'm able to get access to the solenoid here on bank two. First thing I did, of course, was check the harness, make sure it was good to go all the way back. I don't see any obvious chafe points on there or damage or mice damage. Uh, and then I went ahead and checked the connector to make sure it wasn't corroded or any kind of broken wires right where it enters the connector itself. Uh, and then I checked the ohms on the two pins inside there, make sure they weren't loose. I've seen that before too. And it was around 10 some odd ohms. A new one is around 9.2, so we're good to go there. At this point, we need to check the harness and the driver in the PCM uh, to make sure that electrically it's sound before going in and pulling the valve cover. So what I'm using here is a noid light and then I'll test both the ground command side from the PCM and the constant power side and it'll load test it all at the same time, driver and all. So all you need to do is put that noid light on there and then run an on-demand self-test with any scan tool that can do this. You know, Forescan can do this too. So once it goes through the on-demand self test, it's gonna check all the solenoids and electrical circuits, and it will actually pull some amperage through those circuits. So just gotta sit here and watch and see if it lights up. It should be nice and bright. There you go. 
that's pulling some good amps through there. So at this point, it's, it tested uh, the positive side that's constant and also the ground side that is uh, commanded uh, by the PCM over there. So it checks the driver and everything all the way over. And you can do this a couple of times and then we'll just check for codes on here. So there's no codes, no electrical codes, nothing like that. And if you wanna be really sure that the PCM is in full control of this solenoid and um, that it can recognize circuit faults, you can pull us off of here. Now it's an open circuit and we can go ahead and run this once again. Let's see here, right there. We'll run it again. Now it should see that bank two um, has a open circuit which should be what, a P0020. Uh, after it goes through the self-test on here. So we'll we're kind of checking the, the PCM's rationale and its diagnostics that it can do internally. We're checking it both ways. Nice little test. This is also a good test because it's actuating everything, the throttle body, everything. So it's pulling a lot of amps. So it also, at the same time, it will test the uh, powers and grounds coming into the PCM that allows the PCM to work and actuate all these circuits. So we're doing a lot just by an on-demand self-test. So right there, yeah. So it recognizes that that circuit was good to go before the noid light in there, it lit up, and now that it's disconnected, have open circuit, it also recognized that. So we know electrically, uh, both the PCM, the harness, and the connector and everything else is good to go. Now it's time to pull the valve cover off on here and check out that sole and I'm sure it's stuck mechanically. If it's not stuck mechanically, uh, then the phaser has come apart for some odd reason, uh, misinstallation, something like that. Now this one's actually in a 2008, so um, it's gonna require pulling the valve cover just to get to that solenoid. I was told the 05 was coming in, but obviously it's an 08. You see the small port on there for the VCT solenoid. So we have to pull the cover and we'll check out the solenoid mechanically and we'll also be able to check out the phaser all at the same time. So let's get to it. Okay, I have the valve cover off on bank two. Let's take a look at these VCT components on here. So the first thing that I look at is the phaser itself. Make sure that it's bolted on properly. As you can see here, uh, the back side of the phaser is even only around with that groove and the camshaft. So it's seated on there properly, looks good to go. Uh, it's a Ford phaser, it's good. And then I also check the trigger wheel on here to make sure it's even all the way around, looks good to go. And then I'll check for bent tangs on the trigger wheel because that's pretty common uh, right out of the packaging, new from Ford. Uh, those look good. And then I'll also check to make sure the center tang is lined up with the L on here, indicating it's locked in a base timing position. Looks good to go. Okay, so next we're gonna look at the control component, which is the VCT solenoid itself. So I'll unbolt this one and we'll check it out. So the first thing I look at is the spool valve inside. There you can see it right there in the middle. See if there's any scoring or marks on there. And then I'll look at the screens on here real careful. Um, a lot of times when techs do timing jobs on these, um, they're not so clean about it and then all the debris ends up going through the oiling system and it'll puncture these screens. And once these screens are punctured, uh, it'll stick that spool valve in there. So everything in here looks good to go too. It's a Ford solenoid. Uh, and we tested electrically earlier the ohm test. So we're going to do a, uh, a shock test on the bench over there. So in a situation like this, where everything looks pretty clean inside, light varnish, uh, all new components, they're all checking out fine too. Uh, what I'll do is I'll pull off the uh, cam cap right here, the thrust cap, and I'll get a look at it. You want to take a look at it, make sure there's no excessive wear. You see those two tan grooves in there? Uh, those are the channels where all the oiling goes through for um, from the solenoid to the phaser. It goes through the camshaft out to the phaser itself to uh, actuate it. So if they're grooved big time, there's a lot of wear in the cam cap here, it's never gonna make it across and into the holes right there in the camshaft. So that's really important too. This also looks good to go. So I'm really thinking it's a solenoid. Again, um, I've seen it before where the solenoids were actually the electrically, the, the terminals were loose and broken on there uh, and it wasn't working wasn't moving the actual valve inside of there and the same thing uh, once you drove it and it went to actuate the the camshaft phaser 
it would just sit there at 40, just like this one's doing. Same exact thing, which means there's absolutely no actuation going on of the phaser itself, you know. So, it's probably the solenoid. We're going to go over and shock it and see if it moves in there. And then we're probably just going to swap it out to a new uh, solenoid no matter what. Put the valve cover back on nice and loose, a couple bolts, and we'll test it out right here in the stall. For the heck of it, let's go ahead and test it with the PCN through a self-test. Okay, connect it back up over there, keep the heck on, and we'll redo the self-test. We should be able to see and hear it actuate. Come on. see much happening of course me a million error codes everything's torn apart let's go ahead and swap in the new solenoid and see how that one acts all right now with the new solenoid connected let's do the same test see if this one reacts Get it going. All right, let's check it out Mm hmm There you go. You saw it move. Obviously, we need a new solenoid. Simple as that. Verified it. We put it back together. We're going to know it's fixed for good. Okay, now with the new VCT solenoid installed, everything back together. We allowed to seal it to dry overnight. You can see we're sitting right around operating temperature in park at idle. So we'll go ahead and check our VCT error on here. You can see we're hovering right around zero degrees, same as before. Now the real test is to actuate the VCT solenoids and see if they respond and that error does stay around zero like it should. So I'll go ahead and put it into reverse here and we'll brake torque it a little bit and we'll check it out. So that jump right there where you see it jumped in error, that's perfectly normal while the VCTs are ramping up as you see here. Now once the, the VCT duty cycle is stable, the error should be right around zero. As you see right there, perfect. So you can see the VCTs are being actuated and the phaser is moving. And that's the actual reading. That's reading. and. We have, still have zero degrees of error on both banks. So like I said, if you have a major error with like we did on bank two, fix that side first. It's probably affecting the other bank. And sure enough on here, it was. So that's a good lesson for you guys out there trying to diagnose uh, one of these Ford VCT systems like this. All right, I call this one fixed. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.